hearts and go to the Lord.
All right, welcome to, really it's day three of the fast, but for morning prayer it's day two. So I like confusing people, so I'll just throw both of them out there. Um, when I, whenever I do fasting, I always find day three the most difficult. So not to discourage you, but I just want to say you'll make it through it if you're doing a complete fast. And um, you'll make it through even if you're not doing a complete fast. And no matter what you're fasting, it becomes difficult because it's something that you're, comf- it's like comfort food. We like comfort food. We like to go back to what's comfortable. And so where you are being pulled right now is to what's not comfortable. Um, so I want to welcome you this morning and say welcome to this uncomfortable morning. And you will find as you go through this, un- if you, as you travel into the uncomfortable, you will find comfort in the strength of the Lord. And so you're leaving one comfort and you're being drawn to another comfort that is better, that can comfort you in all things. So that's where we're headed today. And I just want to welcome everybody who's watching online. Thank you for joining us. And uh, I know my, my parents even joined us yesterday from South Carolina, so we are traveling across street, across states. Um, not around the world yet, but it's coming. Um, but welcome everybody who's here and all those who are watching online. And if you're, like I said yesterday, if you're watching archived, then uh, I pray a blessing over you. The blessing is not as great if you're watching it live, but there's a great blessing in watching it early in the morning. Um, but I want to just open in prayer. And thank you, Lord, that we can gather together in prayer. I thank you, Lord, that you are all-powerful, all-knowing. Lord, you know all. You know the world and what's going on behind the scenes in the world. Nothing shakes you. Nothing uh, nothing, uh, intimidates you. And so, Lord, I thank you that we are secure in you. You are an all-powerful God. You are great and mighty in strength. Lord, you, you created this world, everything that we have, everything that we touch, everything that we are, you created by your word. And your word has power and your word has strength. And so we trust in you, almighty God, and we trust in your word. And so, Lord, may we be founded in your word. May we be strengthened by your word. And Lord, today, may we be guided by your word. And so, Lord, all our hope is in you. Lord, I pray that we would remove all distractions as we go through this time of prayer and fasting. Anything that pulls us away from looking at you and and touching you and embracing you, Lord, I pray that all distractions, all things that pull, Lord, will lose their grip. And right now, We ask for your hand to be upon us, that you would open our spiritual eyes, that we would see only you and all that you have for us. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so here we go. I'm simply reading from um, this book called 21 Seconds to Change Your World. And if you'll notice, it takes me longer than 21 seconds to read each chapter. But each chapter is going through the Lord's Prayer, and the 23rd Psalm, breaking it up into parts and showing you the significance of the parts. I, I mean, yesterday was simply on our Father who are in heaven and how, or I should say our Father, was just the first two words. And, and today is, is hallowed be thy name. And so it's, it's amazing what we can get out of our Father who, out in, who are in heaven. And the Lord is from the, the, um, from the 23rd Psalm. And so today, we're looking on page 62 of the book, um, chapter 5, Jesus, which says, Hallowed be thy name. And then from the 23rd Psalm, the Lord is. So in the previous chapter... Um, we saw that 23rd Psalm and the Lord's Prayer both begin with the simplest and most profound of all declarations of faith, the ultimate reality of God. David said, the Lord is. Jesus deftly weaves the greatest declaration together with the most comforting of all metaphorical revelations of God's true nature, our Father who are in heaven. And God is, and he is our Father, become together the greatest of all truths. That being said, and said so simply, so beautifully as it is in the Lord's Prayer, Jesus moves us immediately to the next level, which is worship. 
If God is and he is, and if our father and he is, then worshiping him is the only logical, sensible, and reasonable response. Leadership means to be good at leading. Statemanship then seems rather obviously to define itself as does churchmanship, craftsmanship, gamesmanship, and the host of other words that end with ship. So what is worthship? It means to be good at discerning what is worthy of adoration and to express that discernment as praise. Worthship. Jesus' prayer establishes that right in the foyer, right in the front. When we begin by stating God's worthiness to be praised, even before we make a single petition, we make it clear that we understand the ground rules. The Lord is God and we are not. He alone is worthy of our heart's praise, so worthy that even his very name is holy and hallowed. All inner healing is tied to a proper human God relationship. When that perspective is out of whack, even, or I should say, every mechanism of psycho-emotional balance becomes distorted. Spiritual confusion, the twisting of perversion of worship causes emotional disease such as self-pity, self-absorption, and every other hyphenated sin. The story is told of a deeply depressed woman who came to see a psychiatrist seeking relief. After five sessions, he wrote her a prescription. And I love this. Let's go to the Niagara Falls. This is the um, this prescription given, go to the Niagara Falls, check into a motel for five days all day, except for meals, stand at the bottom of the falls and stare up at it. <laughs> contemplate, contemplate its awesome power. Do this, the doctor said, and I'll see you when you get back. She stared incredulously at the note before exploding in anger. You quack, you're, you're a charlatan. I, play, I pay you hundreds of dollars an hour for every session, and for what? For this? The doctor calmly explained the mar remarkable prescription this way. I've seen you now for five sessions. I mostly listened, and you talked without stopping for an hour each time. All you talked about was you, your dreams, your hurts, your failures, your guilt. All you need to do to get well is to see something bigger than yourself. Isn't that what we all need? See something or someone bigger than ourselves. A restored perspective is among the most important ingredients in the prescription each of us need to get well. His name is holy. My name is just a handle, a way for folks to speak to me about me. But it's just a name. It's not the very essence of me. I could even legally change my name and not really change who I am. Yet when Moses asked to know God's name, the Lord simply answered, I am. In other words, God is his name and his name is holy and he is holy and he is worthy to be adored. Another necessary ingredient in the prescription of our healing is hope. A dear friend of mine, an Orthodox rabbi in Israel, pointed out to me that asher which I and many others translate as I am, has been translated differently in Judaism as I will be. This name for God speaks of hope. I am the future, a new future waiting to make new in that future. And in, that, in other words, when you reach tomorrow, I am says, I will be there ahead of you. That is our hope. We know he is to be worshiped. How are we to worship? That's the question. I think that many in the church, especially music leaders, do not realize how awkward singing is for many others in the church, especially men. One such man said to me that he dreaded the singing in church. My wife just seems to love it. He said, I'm glad of that. I want her to love it, but I just can't seem to love it. I can't sing. I feel uncomfortable. And to tell you the truth, I wish we could just skip the singing and go straight to the preaching. Then that makes me feel bad. I know I'm supposed to be blessed in worship. She really is. Uh, um, she just puts her hands up and sings like a bird. It's beautiful, he said. I love to hear her. Nobody wants to hear, 
hear me even when I sing softly. I just don't, it just doesn't do it for me. I guess that means something's wrong with me, or at least wrong with my faith. So, Dr. Rutland tells him, maybe you're singing a, maybe you have singing and worship confused. He stared at me in frank astonishment. Maybe I do. Aren't they the same? Singing in church should be worship, but not all worship is singing. Why don't you try worshiping a different way while everyone else is singing? You worship in a new way. How can I worship without singing? When everyone else starts singing, close your eyes and repeat the Lord's Prayer. Then, repeat Psalm 23, back and forth. Add any of the scriptures you want, want to it, but start with these two. If you like, raise your hands like your wife does, but just close your eyes. Pray the Lord's Prayer. With everyone else singing, it will require some pretty serious concentration Focus is all part of worship. And with the whole church singing, you really have to focus. And when they're singing, you concentrate with all your might on the Lord's Prayer and on Psalm 23. When they sing, you worship like that. He agreed to it, reluctantly, I should add, but he agreed. I talked to him some months later, and he was eager to share his experience. In the first place, I'm truly enjoying worship for the first time, he said. My wife even commented how she loves seeing me worship. She thought I was singing, and when I told her what I was really doing, I thought she would just try to talk me into singing. Instead, she said that she thinks it's wonderful. She says, said that she's going to try it herself sometime. Now, what do you think of that? Imagine that, I said, with a touch of ever so gentle sarcasm. Worshiping in church. Who would have ever dreamed? <laughs> I needn't have, I didn't worry. I needn't, I needn't have worried about sarcasm. It was totally wasted on him. I know, he said in frank amazement, isn't that something? When we worship God, we begin to see that all the, all the navel gazing in the world will not liberate us from him, from him, will not liberate us from us. Between morbid self-pity on the one hand and narcissistic self-exaltation on the other, we find ourselves sick and stranded on the sandbar of wounded souls, unable to nudge ourselves off, staring up at him day after day, seeing him in all his wondrous grace and grandeur, begins to lift us off the bar and put us back onto the sea of healing. No pure statement of worship has ever been given to us in this. Hallowed be thy name. And so today, as we begin our time of prayer, let us also begin our time of worship. So before jumping into praying over somebody's needs and even your own needs, just take a Take a look. Gaze on him. Realize who you're praying to. Recognize his greatness, his power, his awesomeness. And look at someone greater than yourself. And when you do that, all of a sudden, all these needs that sometimes we pray, as we pray over these cards and, and look at the needs before us, they become like insurmountable. It's like, oh my goodness, There's so many needs here. There's so many uh, that are struggling. And all of a sudden, before you've touched any of the cards or the requests or the needs or even your own, before you've done that, you've gazed on him and you've seen how great he is. And it's not so hard for him to meet those needs. So if you would, we're going to read the Lord's Prayer. And then we're going to read... Psalm 23. It's on page 24 of the book if you need it, or you can actually open your Bible. Um, But if you would, stand with me for just a minute as we start off. So the Lord's Prayer says this, and let's just, let's just pray this together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Psalm 23 says this, the Lord is my shepherd. I will not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemy. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Lord, thank you for these scriptures, and Lord, thank you for your word, your word to us, and Lord, thank you that we can pray these, and we can pray these these prayers with new insight, and Lord, we can pray with new power, and Lord, we can pray knowing that you can meet all of our needs. We bless you, Lord, and Lord, we commit this time as your time, Lord. Let no one else or nothing else take up this time. But Lord, we commit it to you right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Feel free during this time to grab hold of some of the cards after you have worshipped him. Take some of the cards, pray over the needs, talk about how he is the one to meet each and every one of these needs. And like I said yesterday, this time right now, we're going to gather back together for closing prayer at um, 10 of, but this time you can do whatever you want, whatever it is, just like he explained a new way to worship uh, to this man. You can worship however you want. You can pray how are you can, you can raise your hand, you can kneel, you can sit, you can lay prostrate on the floor, however you want. Just get alone with God, get the distractions away and worship.
maybe you're at a place right now that you feel like you can't sing it as well. Maybe you're at a place where you're just like, I, I don't want to say it as well. But we're going to speak it anyway. We're going to declare it anyway. We're going to pray this for us anyway. That we want to align with the presence of Jesus in this place. We want to align our lives, every, every part of our lives with the presence of Jesus. Oh, it is well.
just at the beginning and you're not just watching from the end but you're walking with me in the middle you're walking with me in the middle you're the god of the middle you're jehovah in the middle know you serve a faithful king. Would you lift up a shout of praise in this room? Come on. He's faithful. Come on. He's faithful. He's faithful. He's faithful. He's faithful. He's faithful. He doesn't change. He's consistent. He doesn't change. He's consistent.
Uh, my mic was off. Uh, we're going to gather together, and wherever you are, you're gathered in one spirit with us. And so we want to encourage you to come together at the, at the end, and um, that we would just pray united and trusting. Actually, what I would like us to do is right now just think of the biggest challenge that you might have today. We all have challenges, we all have struggles, we all have things that we face. Some of us, seem they seem insurmountable. Some of them are things we've been dealing with for a long time. But think about what your biggest struggle is. And now, after you've thought of that, like we talked, think about how great your God is. The creator of all things. He literally is the one who gives you the breath that you breathe right now. It's as basic as that. He created every molecule and every cell of your being. Every bone. He created the blood within your body. You exist because of him. Everything was created by him and for him. And so as you as we go into prayer as you think about that struggle and now you've thought about how great and powerful and mighty and awesome our God is that can't even compare to him. And so he has all things. He has all things in his control. And so surrender it to him. Stop trying to handle it on your own. And so we will just say, Lord, here's what I've been consumed with. Here's what I've been trying to fix. Here's what I've been trying to deal with. And so, Lord, I take it out of my hands and I place it in your hands. The hands of the Almighty. The hands of the All-Powerful One. The one who knows the end, the end from the beginning and is right here in my middle, right here with me, always present, always available, his, no, his love knows no end. And so, Lord, I take this and I place it in your hands. And I'm not going to struggle with it any longer. I'll give it to you. And so, Lord, right now, we take all of our fears, all of our worries, and we say fear does not live here. And, Lord, we turn it every, everything over to you. And so, Lord, I pray for your hand to be upon your church, your people, the body of Christ right now. May, may we be strengthened in spirit, Lord, in the name of Jesus. May we be filled with your spirit. May we be touched by you. And so, Lord, as we're filled with your spirit, may it not just be a filling that stays right here in this building or in our homes where we are. Lord, may it not just be a filling for a moment, but may it be a fresh filling and refilling all throughout our day, overflowing with the presence of your spirit. Lord, touched by you continually. And so, Lord, as we are filled with you, may we be filled with joy. May we be filled with peace. Your peace, which guards our heart and our mind in Christ Jesus. So I pray and declare a blessing, a blessing that comes from you. A blessing that is beyond us. A blessing that no man can declare, but that you can declare and you have declared over your children. And so, Lord, we turn and we receive your blessing. We break every curse in the name of Jesus. And, Lord, we receive your blessing. So, Lord, I thank you. And I pray right now for those who are struggling with sickness or illness or disease. Like we said, Lord, you are a healer. You are greater. And so, Lord, we declare healing in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we pray for all those who are going to work today, all those, uh, the, the young people that are going to school today. Lord, I pray that they 
wouldn't be distracted, but they would grow, but not just grow intellectually, but they would grow spiritually. They'd be, Lord, as our young people go and our kids, as they go to school, may they not be lured away by the world. Lord, may they be so in awe of you and who you are, but Lord, that they would embrace you and your principles and your presence. And they wouldn't even hear or be entertained by the voice of the enemy. So, Lord, I pray protection and safety over our kids and our young people who are going to school, all those who are going to work, Lord. May we not think like the world, act like the world, talk like the world. May we think and talk like children of the most high God, adopted into the family of God. Those who are called to a higher calling and live to a higher level and have an extraordinary blessing on their lives, so, Lord, I pray that we would see all that we are as your children and we live up to all that you've called us to be. And once again, we're going to return to the Lord's Prayer. And we will say this as we close out. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you, Lord. God bless you. I want to remind you that tonight we do have uh, church tonight, everything from the youth to the children to, to the adults. And our focus, of course, is going to be on this 21 days of prayer for adults, but it's both going to be in person here and it's going to be live streamed as well. So we invite everyone to, to join us tonight and uh, pray God's blessing throughout your entire day. God bless you. Have a great day. See you tomorrow.